Hey friends, it is Wednesday, and that means it is Ask a Flower Farmer. It's your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler, and um, glad to be here, gang. So, if you've never joined with me before, you know, um, you may not know that if you would like to ask me a question about growing flowers, flower farming, um, business, garden dogs, whatever you got, I'll do my best to answer it for you, but you need to put those questions down below in the little bubble with the question mark in it. And you know that I absolutely love it when any of our students from any of our online courses puts the sunflower emoji in your comments here. Um, we just love seeing um, what, how many of our students are engaging with us and that's just a lot of fun and it identifies you to other students so remember put your questions down below um in the, the bubble with the question mark and i have i want to just talk about something before we jump out of the gate first off um today at one o'clock on clubhouse if you join me over there um for, it's like an hour long i'm sorry half an hour um, chat, usually about half of it is me talking about a topic, the other half you get to ask me questions. Today I'm talking about lifelines for flower farmers and if you want to learn what that's all about, you better come over there. If you don't know what Clubhouse is, just download the phone app, join Clubhouse, then join my club which is flower farming and um, it's really pretty cool. It's just audio y'all. It's like talking on the phone and you can come up and talk to me and ask your questions or you can send it in through the back channel. Um, so join me there and then also on Saturdays I stream live on YouTube and Facebook at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and this week I'm going to be making some soil blocks, small soil blocks. I'm going to be sowing celosias. Um, probably starting some sunflowers, and I may even be doing some salvia cuttings. It just all depends on time. So I would love for um, you to join me on those two opportunities because, friends, here is the big tip of the week. We're already hearing from people, am I too late to start my warm season seeds? Holy cow, y'all. I haven't even started. That's what I'm starting Saturday. Um, well, actually, we might start some tomorrow, but we, we are just now, uh, my last frost date is April 15th. I live in zone um, 8A, 7B, but the zone really doesn't matter about warm season. It's all about your frost dates. We would not plant warm season stuff outside transplants, not direct sowing, until nighttime temperatures are over 60 degrees and holding there. Um, so I just want to say that because, I mean, we just, people are beating themselves up saying, I've already missed. It's like, friends, it's not even the right time for most of us to even get started. And here is the other thing. We will be starting warm season tender annuals till August. I mean, constantly. So you're not too late for that. And um, so the other thing I want to just give you like an overview of because we are also being inundated with people have people saying things like my seedlings aren't growing. Um, you know, yours are bigger and more beautiful and it's only been, you know, mine are like the same age as yours and they're still tiny. So I'm just going to give you um, the kind of down and dirty on what it takes to grow a happy, healthy seedling. First off, um, I, I wrote myself a little list here so I don't screw this up. Starting on a heat mat, a seedling heat mat. And when you follow the directions with a heat mat and then 50% of the seeds show signs of life, that means cracking. That doesn't mean you have to wait until it's grown up and starting to stretch. When 50% of the seeds that you've sown show signs of life, move it off of the heat mat to the grow light. They should not be on both at the same time because that will literally toast them from the bottom and the top. Um, so it's either a heat mat or grow light in the process. You never, we never have them under both of those. Then when you move them to the grow light, they need 16 hours of light a day to stay short and stocky. We know it as a fact that better quality, healthy seedlings are more disease and pest resistant, they produce more abundance, and they just hit the ground running. Um, so 16 hours of light a day. But here's the, the two things that I think 
mess people up. Because a lot of people are doing that, but they're still thinking, well, I'm still not having good success. The two other key things, one is the air temperature of the room. Um, you, I mean, think about it. These plants need to grow vegetatively, right? The, the foliage on the top. They need some warmth. I mean, you're looking at at least for growing plants after they've sprouted, you're looking at 70 degrees plus at this time of the year to get them to start growing and their roots to start sp spreading out. So your room temperature has to be um, at least 68 to 70 degrees, but higher than that is even better. But you want to think, know what I think the number one reason that people are suffering? It's watering habits. I get inundated y'all constantly on DMs and on emails that come to the office and we even get phone calls here. For plants to grow happily and healthily, that temperature is key for the air temperature. And I'm not talking about soil temperature. Um, that is a deep rabbit hole to go down. If you pay attention to your air temperatures, everything else just falls into place. You don't have to get involved in um, a deep dive because here's the other thing, y'all, if you're a flower farmer, you don't, you are not going to have the time, the energy, and the gut juice to do deep dives on the hundred different things you're going to all of a sudden have to become a pro at. Um, so the air temperature, when it is warm enough, that means that in a 24-hour cycle, you water your soil blocks every morning. I always do it first thing in the morning because you want to give them all day long with light um, to, go dry, to go to dry. So in a 24-hour period, they should go from wet when you water them to dry the next morning when it's time to water them. And if they aren't doing that, then you need to tweak your environment because not only is the 24-hour, you should be watering once a day for seedlings. If they're staying wetter longer than that, that is not a healthy environment. Um, the, the roots are kind of gurgling down there. I mean, literally, think about that, right? Um, so the air temperature is key. And if you master your air temperature, everything else kind of falls into place. Um, so I think watering, either overwatering, underwatering, or because um, I just got a message just not long ago, um, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, it's my day to do natural, which I'll tell you what that is in a second. And my blocks, you know, I'm only watering every 48 hours. Well, I can tell you, before I even think about the natural situation, if you're only having to water every 48 hours, that is just not a healthy growing environment in my experience. Um, so air temperature is what it's all about. And then once a week, and sorry, y'all, we don't have any unwrapped. This is a bottle of the Neptune's Harvest Seaweed and Fish. Every Monday, this goes in my watering can. So it's just when I water on Monday mornings, everything that's under a grow light gets this, right? So they're getting nutrition to help keep them, again, healthy and happy. And I just follow the directions on the bottle. Um, and then on Wednesdays, you do not want to mix your fertilizer and natural. On Wednesdays, we use, this is a larvicide. It's a biological. This kills fungus gnat larva, which lives in the soil. The adults fly around your room and lay eggs in the soil. Um, and so if you do this once a week, y'all, you will, sm you will prevent a fungus gnat outbreak. If you have a fungus gnat outbreak, it'll probably take you a month of being diligent and really frustrated, but it will work. Um, so every Wednesday, I put gnat troll in. And then she just brought me this. These are the yellow sticky traps. This is what traps the adults, but more importantly, it's a monitoring tool. And you can find all of those on our website at thegardenersworkshop.com. Um, and I know I talk about this a lot, y'all, but still we just have lots of folks that um, are just struggling in these areas. And I totally understand. Um, I didn't start, I was not a um, re um, regular natural user until about two years ago. And I had a horrible outbreak. I mean, it was like the most horrible situation. Had a big event coming. I had enough more fungus gnats than I had seedlings. Um, so you want to, the only way to win the war is to prevent them. And that's how we prevent them. And it's, um, all the instructions are on there. And you just do it every week from the minute we fire up our 
grow room. So I have a bunch of questions now and let's jump on those. And um, I also want to say that um, the gardenersworkshop.com and remember to keep your eye on our new seed category because we're adding lots of new seeds. All right, Crystal, if I'm in 7B as well, but I'm in North Carolina, is it too late to start hardy annuals? Also, just did soil blocking yesterday and couldn't quite get these perfect blocks. How can I get more of a formed block? All right, so um, first to answer your question, you really, your, your zone means nothing about when you actually start seeds. It is all based on your frost dates. So if your last spring frost, cool flowers for the best results to, to follow the cool flower concept, you need to be planting the transplants six to eight weeks before your last frost. So you'll have to do the math. I suspect you're too late. Um, I mean, you can certainly still do it, but what you have to know is you're not going to experience the abundance of stem length and abundance of stems and disease and pest resistance based, all of that is based on how well established the plants are when they face heat. There's an alarm or something going on off up here. What is that? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Just, we have an alarm going off and it's actually a doorbell. Um, and so you'll just have to weigh whether you want to do that or not. In my opinion, my choice would be to move on to warm season stuff. Also did soil blocking yesterday and couldn't quite get the perfect blocks. Most often that is a result of either the blocking mix not being wet enough um, and also what is your blocking mix. Um, but most often people, if you're following the recipe where it's one part water to three parts of the blocking mix, sometimes you have to put a little bit more, um, but having it too dry is the problem for that happening. All right, so let's see here. I'm about to transplant sunflowers. What temperature do you put the covers on for them? Same as cool flowers. Um, no, so first off, war sunflowers are not a cool flower. Um, they're a warm season, tender annual, but we have learned through experience that they are more cold tolerant than we ever dreamed they were. So my practice has been to plant the transplants three weeks before our last frost date, just because it's not likely that we're gonna have a deep hard frost. Although that did happen last year, we went down um, to like right high 20s um, and we had covers on them. So if you're planting sunflowers before your last spring frost, they need to be covered from the minute you plant them. Um, and then if you're gonna have a deep dive like we did last year, I think it was like 28 or something, um, I just threw an extra cover just for the nighttime when those temperatures happen. They are warm season annuals, so just keep that in mind for that. Tips for Celosia, please. Mine died after showing first true leaves. So there's a whole lot of reasons um, of which Primarily what I just, the, how I kick this off, um, celosias are heat lovers. They definitely want to be on, um, you know, started with a seedling heat mat, which helps to prevent dampening off. And if it's borderline, you'll get um, dampening off, which is a fungus, um, which will take them out even after you've moved them off of the heat mat. And they need warm growing conditions. So, um, that is pretty unusual. Most people's complaint about celosia is they have trouble getting it to germinate, um, but it just needs to be warm from the get-go for celosia, and that is actually what I'm going to be planting on Saturday on um, YouTube, and it'll be streaming on YouTube and Facebook at the same time, so if you're not a Facebook user, you can watch it on You Watch Me on YouTube, and I do try to take questions, um, so I'll be talking about that whole process. If I sow straw flowers now, will it produce usable stems? Okay, so that's a great question, um, 
hunt country flowers. She's asking, if I sow straw flowers now, will it produce usable stems? Last frost date, late April, does straw flowers produce all season? Straw flowers are one of the cool flowers that we push deeper into the warm season. Last year, we planted successions of straw flowers. So our straw flowers are already in the ground. We have more started in the room, and we'll be starting them again in, let's see, what month is this? This is March. We'll start them again in April. Um, we do three plant three starts a month apart, and we did find that they went on to produce, I mean, our, our very early spring produced like 48-inch stems, but we really don't need 48-inch stems, right? And the later planting still were producing 30-inch stems, so that was still plenty enough. Um, and straw flowers will, we pinch half of our crop, um, as I do on many of the branching crops, um, and they do go on to produce, but there's just nothing like having that successive fresh crop coming on, and it is such a very, very important crop. So yes, definitely um, plant more sunflowers. Joanne, why are some of my snaps under grow lights just to stem like the leaves are burned off? So Joanne, if you look closer, chances are really good that um, the seed never let go for the, the first for the leaves to pop out of the, the first um, little baby leaves that come first. Um, and what we have found is some varieties are definitely more predisposed to that than others. And it is from a lack of moisture on the surface. That was what led me to start using um, burlap, the wide, lap, wide weave burlap during the sprouting stage while they're on the seedling heat map. That helps to prevent that. And um, I will tell you this morning, so we're germinating right now, Opus and Rocket. And Opus is already starting to germinate, and it doesn't do that. Um, at least the ones, that's, the ones that I saw this morning didn't have any on there. Um, so misting the tops of the blocks and then using, we use burlap. Other people use domes and things. We aren't dome users just because it is just very easy to induce, um, introduce disease or encourage diseases like dampening off. Um, so lack of moisture. And in fact, if you just leave them, little sprouts will come from the bottom. So they'll be all right, I think. Straw flowers was covered Saturday night, but brown, will it recover or do I need to pull it out, pull them out? First off, I don't, so somebody's thinking that their straw flowers got whacked by the cold. You know, we had that crazy 22 degree weekend, right, this past weekend, and we did too. Um, I don't ever make decisions on pulling something out nearly that quick. I mean, you just don't know. Um, and so that doesn't mean that you shouldn't say in the back of your mind, first off, it's always a good idea to succession plant straw flowers, as I just mentioned a couple minutes ago. I would start more as your backup and plant them anyway, and then you'll, by the time they're up and ready to plant, you'll know whether you need to plant them where the dead ones are or they recovered. It's just really, really hard to say, and I have been so surprised in the past um, that I just don't, and I understand, especially when you don't have much space, it's like we want to get something out of the way to plant something else. And I just want to say, don't make decision. I mean, we're talking about living stuff, y'all. It just doesn't happen that fast. You can't make that decision. Not your business asks, what to do with cutworms? Easy English to understand, please. <laughs> um, so cutworms, I do not know if there is a BT for them that is a biological that you can use out in the garden. I would literally put that into a search engine, cutworm treatments. Um, the way that we, the only thing we have trouble with those on are tomatoes, and we just have found that having larger transplants to go to the garden helped prevent that, or you can even put little collars on your plants, which is not an option if they're taken down all a bunch of flower seedlings. Um, so I'm sorry, I have no treatment for that, but that I would reach out to an extension agent and I would put those exact that exact question into a search engine. Y'all, that is what I do so often. When somebody asks me something like that that I need to send, give a reply to, that's what we do is put the question into a search engine and you just learn what are reliable resources and what aren't. Can I leave my seedlings on a heat mat when I add light or is it, is it best to remove the heat when they're 50% germinated? If you will toast your seedlings 
top and bottom by leaving them on light and heat. You only use one of those tools at a time. Seedland heat mat, 50% germinated. You take them off the heat mat and move them over here to the light. Um, so that hopefully that helps you. My flamingo feather celosi is not germinating well. Only 30 of 40 have come up. They're in three quarter inch soil blocks and on the heat mats at around 75 to 78. The room air is above 70. They are started, they were started around 10 days ago. Keep waiting, I would almost promise you it is a lack of moisture. I don't know if you have, um, you know, if you do, if you're using burlap, I would mist in the morning when you water your blocks. Um, I would mist them before you put the burlap back down. Um, but moisture is key, y'all. Um, and I understand that it is a learning curve. That's why we just kind of, once you figure out which works for the majority, um, is most likely to be the best tool for you. I mean, I pull the burlap back, I water all the trays, I pour off any excess after a few minutes, and then I miss the tops. Um, most, it depends on what I'm starting. Like, we just did a bunch of Rebecca's. I mean, I will tell you that Sahara and the Cherry Brandy and... Denver Daisy are the best darn germinators. Um, they just start so quick and easily. I don't even bother misting them, but when I start doing snaps or if I'm doing celosias, um, definitely misting really, really helps. And y'all, here's the other thing that um, I want to want to add, and I understand how hard it is to do this, especially when you're just starting out. You got to leave your plants alone. I mean, I go into my plant room one time in the morning before the day gets started and take care of all my water and chores, move anybody outside that needs to go outside or vice versa. And then I don't see those plants again until the next morning. And I think the fact that I am not o overly paying attention and worrying and wondering really, really helps. So I just encourage you to try to do that. Good morning here from Oregon. I started my Lizzie's 8th of January. They're still super tiny. Are they going to be ready by summer? I have no idea, Little Meadow. Um, that is the perfect example why most growers order plugs. Um, it takes 12 to 16 weeks to get a half-inch tall plant. And there's a lot of ways to kill them during that long period. Um, so I have not grown them from that early stage to when I get them, uh, when I receive my plugs, um, they're about that wide from side to side, the, the little plants are, and they're only about that tall. And they are being grown in a greenhouse with controlled, optimal conditions. Um, and it still takes them that long. So... Time will only tell, and Lysianthus really um, is temperature sensitive indoors growing, which is one reason why we let the, the professionals do that because they have control. Um, but anyway, be sure you feed them weekly and plant them as soon as you think they're big enough because they'll do much better out in the garden. Hi, Lisa. Do I need to wait for a frost-free period to plant the transplants cool flowers outside? No. I did harden them off, but they haven't seen any frost so far. So that's, you know, the second window to plant cool flowers, um, other than fall, is very early spring. And very early spring is six to eight weeks before your last frost date. We have multiple frosts and even snow sometimes during that period. So you harden them off. And the key is, if you want to, you know, experience the cool flower concept, which is well-established plants once they start growing and blooming. And the later you wait to plant them, the least of, less of that that you're going to experience. Um, so I would say if you have hardened them off and you're in the six to eight week window, plant them immediately. Um, <clears throat> and if you're going to do a deep dive on some cold temperatures, just cover them if it makes you feel better. But they take cold a lot better than we do, y'all. All right. Florabelle, do you pinch Atroplex? You can definitely pinch, pinch Atroplex. And I very rarely get the opportunity to plant to, to pinch Atroplex because the deer pinch them. Deer are a special fan 
of Atroplex. Atroplex is in the spinach family, and we rarely get it um, without the deer just ravaging it. I mean, if I don't keep it covered, which sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I mean, we just don't have to do much deer protection where I am. I mean, they eat billy balls and they eat Atroplex. And because billy balls is not nearly as tall as Atroplex, they don't get to plant. If I could just remember to plant them side by side or in the same bed so that I could then provide deer protection, we'd be better off. Um, so see y'all, I mean, I make mistakes just like everybody else does. Um, so Atroplex is definitely a brancher and you can pinch it. And again, like I've offered in the past, I pinch 50% of a crop because I want both worlds. I want the earliest blooms, the unpinched, and I want earliest branching, and that is the pinched. By doing half and half, you get the best of both worlds, right? Hunt Country Flowers, do you prime seeds by soaking in water for a few days? I found this greatly improves germination of lots of cool flowers like Rudbeckia, Dara, Nigella, and Tweedia. Um, no, I don't. There are select, I mean, we do Bells of Ireland, but we just have not had any trouble, particularly with Rudbeckia and Dara, um, Nigella either, really. Um, so, no, I did not. I, we have never done that beyond um, a couple of, well, Bells of Ireland is the only one that really comes to mind in the cool flowers. Hi, Lisa. Do you have an opinion about Vinca? My flower snob friends laugh at me for planting it all over, but there's, it's the only thing that deer won't eat here. Um, so I don't have an opinion about Vinca because first off, there's a bunch of different kinds of Vinca. There's the annual Vinca, which literally is what we grow in our pots here on, at the warehouse um, in, in containers um, because it's so beautiful. But Vinca, the vine, the perennial is really invasive. And once you have it, you will never, ever, ever get rid of it. And that doesn't seem like a problem the first four years. But once it's seven years from when you planted it and it is showing up in everywhere that does not get mowed, you will change your mind about that. Um, so it just really depends on what it is and you do what you gotta do, right? First fruits. I planted some zinnias and noticed they look a little yellow, too much water maybe. Um, Zinnias, I'm imagining that you're talking about starting them inside unless you live in a tropical area or, um, but zinnias don't like to sit in soil blocks and more, even worse, in containers. Um, we plant zinnias out when they're two to three weeks old and if you get beyond three weeks, they start getting really ugly really fast. Yellow, they'll get spots from disease, lots of stuff. And if that is, if it, if in fact, you're not in a tropical area, Zinnias would not be planted out until your last frost date has passed. Um, and so if that is still several weeks away, you just go ahead and compost those transplants and start two weeks before you're supposed to plant them. You will be so much happier because they will just continue. There's nothing you can do indoors to support that and get them better. Um, and so, and it's just not recommended. Again, you'll be planting a stressed plant that is going to be fighting mildew out of the gate because it's stressed and it'll be very susceptible to that and all kinds of other bacteria spot, lots of other Xenia diseases. So I understand, but just compost them and start over if you're not able to plant them immediately. Is snow on the mountain invasive? Um, I do not know if it's invasive because we, that is one of those flowers that we do not grow because it um, leaks that milky sap so excessively and it can cause skin irritation, eye disorders if it's splashed in an eye, um, and it's just we never grew it. I mean, it's a great foliage, but it is not worth the risk um, of the liability of growing it. So I cannot, I do not, I just haven't grown it, so I haven't experienced that. Tips for getting eucalyptus and craspedia seeds to sprout. So first off, two totally different animals there. Um, so eucalyptus is a warm season annual, um, although <clears throat> some people are able to winter it over. And it is super slow. That's what you have to know. Um, so just be patient and do your best to not overwater or underwater during that germination time. I mean, it can take 12 to 14, I'm sorry, 
14 to 21 days for that sucker to actually pop sometimes. It totally depends on your environment. Um, I was sharing some images on my stories last week or the week before of folks that were showing because we had just gotten restocked the silver dollar, which we do still have in stock on our store. Um, the silver dollar seed showing some of them got it to germinate in five to seven days. What does that mean? That means that their environment is exactly what eucalyptus wants. Warm, moist, with a rotation. You know what I mean? Going through that dry cycle from wet to dry in a 24-hour period. Craspedia is a cool flower, um, and we get excellent germination with that. Um, and I cannot remember whether it's covered or not covered. It would be on your seed packet if it came from us. Um, and we use a seedling heat mat with a cookie cooling rack to cool it down a little bit. Um, and we got like 100% germination. So um, I don't know if you're trying those things, but be sure you read the instructions. Does the seed get covered with soil or not? It needs to be the warmth of a seedling heat mat, but not hot. That's why we use the cookie cooling rack. All right, y'all, we're on the last question. It's 12 o'clock. All right, so here's a good question. Freckled, vi oh no, here it is. Little, where are there? Here we go. Little Meadow Flower Farm. I am such a tiny farm. My nigella and bachelor buttons look amazing. What happens if I don't thin? I hate to lose any blooms being so small. You're welcome. Um, so I totally understand the resistance to actually thin, but friends, they look really healthy when they're this tall, when they're overcrowded, but when they're overcrowded and they start blooming and it warms up outside, they're gonna get really ugly really fast. So um, I would definitely thin, and no, you can't save the thinnings, you just need to pull them, not dig them, because you're gonna disturb those that you're leaving, um, and they should not be crowded together. I mean, one every six inches, I mean, you can maybe put one every three inches or Let's just say you have two that are close together and then a space. You can, there's somebody at the door. Um, you can actually thin them um, and not do every six inches, but do them just a little bit closer. But I totally understand, but they may look healthy right now, but they are not going to be healthy once they start growing up and blooming, right? Um, so, friends, we're going to call it a day here. We have somebody picking up package. Um, so um, anyway, that's one of the joys of being a local here at the Gardener's Workshop. We're in Newport News, Virginia, and we offer free local pickup. And um, anyway, people come here to the warehouse to pick up. So um, all right, friends, couple things. Don't forget to head over to Clubhouse at one o'clock. If you want to hear my tips, if you want me to throw you a lifeline. And um, also, those tips that I went over about a healthy environment. I mean, if you're struggling with your plants not growing like you think they should, chan I mean, something is wrong. You know, it's the temperature, it's your watering habits, it's not enough light, too much um, being on light and heat at the same time. I mean, we're hearing all kinds of um, things that people are struggling with, and we want to help you and Head over to thegardenersworkshop.com. There's lots of resources. And then I'll see you Saturday um, as you can watch me make small blocks. Um, and we do still have small blockers in stock and available, ready to ship. Um, as well as, you know, I have an online course called Seed Starting Made Easy. It's a 90-minute course that takes you through the whole process as well as direct seeding. Um, and you can find that over at the Gardeners Workshop too. So, friends, until we meet again, hopefully at 1 o'clock. Ciao.